Good evening, Kenton community. My name is Sabatino Sumato, your superintendent, and this is your weekly connection update. Tonight, I want to bring you through an outline of the entire weekly connection. Uh, it is kind of lengthy this week, so I, I want to make sure that everybody knows what's going to be included in this whole uh, time that we have together this evening. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about remote learning and the feedback that we've received. Also, the hybrid, hybrid phase-in update. I want to give you some important updates there. From there, we're going to give you just a little bit of a review on technology and some things to look forward to there. Then I'm also going to spend some time talking about food service. Uh, we've had some wonderful food service in the past two weeks, but there's also some things that we've learned, and I want to give you a very important update on food service uh, pickup times. Then I'm going to give you an update on our upcoming Board of Education meeting and some changes there. We're going to really round off the evening then with a very important update regarding athletics. And then finally about a parent question and answer session that we have coming up next week that I promise to update you on this week. First, our remote learning feedback. You know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how appreciative we are of our families and students for really taking the time not only to be patient during this beginning of school, but we've received all sorts of feedback. And to be fully transparent, we've received positive and we've also received negative feedback. But I really want to encourage you, continue your feedback because that helps us learn what's working for families and we are very appreciative of it. Feedback like this helps us to improve our practice and all of the feedback that we receive, we consistently share it out to the schools. So um, granted, I'm not gonna lie to you here either. Because a family is not uh, pleased with an approach or pleased with one way that we're doing things, it doesn't necessarily equate to that it's going to be able to be changed. But when we do hear that feedback, it does prompt our thinking and help us to think out of the box to make things better for our Kenton families. So thank you very much for all that work. The hybrid phasing update. Now what I mean by this is we all know, uh, we see it should be on your screen right now, that one pager that shows how our plan will phase from virtual to hybrid because that's the best thing that we can uh, hope for right now is hybrid. And of course, if we could later on this year get back to full 100% uh, in-person instruction, then that's what we're gonna do. But right now we're striving for hybrid. And, and folks, I wanna also encourage you to understand, I said this last week, I've said this in the past, but I wanna emphasize it again. This time frame that you see on your screen is not something that's written in stone. That's the beauty of it. It is flexible. And what I mean by flexible is, yes, of course, these are our minimal expectations that we're holding for ourselves. But for some reason, if we could get back earlier and things line up that we can do that, then we are absolutely gonna do that for any of these phases. Um, we do know that this first phase in, this October 13th though is pretty solid. Um, those further dates when we're talking about the rest of our elementary and fifth graders and the rest of our secondary, those could be flexible depending on how uh, we're progressing through this model. But let's talk about this first, this first section. Our UPK, our K, our grade one and special education self-contained classes, we know that they're going to be returning on that October 13th date. But here's the thing, I promise that our schools and central office will be working on getting our kiddos back for some introduction and orientation. So I'm proud to announce today that elementary students who will be returning to school will take part in some orientations. The two dates will be September 30th and October 7th. Now, uh, self-contained students will actually be returning on both of those days. Other students, the other, other students other than self-contained, you'll be receiving further information of what date you'll be returning to, either that September 30th or that October 7th. So please stay tuned for that. Students will meet their teacher and become familiar with school day procedures and safety protocols. And like I said, each individual school will be communicating the information regarding these dates, but I wanted to at least put these dates on families' radars right now. September 30th and October 7th, some of you will come on only one of those days if you are UPK, K, or a first grader. Um, Self-contained students 
will be coming on both of those days. Now, let me be clear, this is not for all of our students in the district. This is just for that first phase of students that are scheduled to return on October 13th. We're going to bring them back on those two days. You'll get information which of those two days you'll, you'll be coming for just to orientate them so they're ready for that October 13th phase in. Now, our, our next topic is technology. And, and folks, we really appreciate all of your patience. I gotta tell you, our technology department has been working, when I say day and night, I mean day and night. I mean, there's times that it's 10, 11, midnight, um, and these folks are still working. Uh, it, it's not an easy task. We knew that as a district, that we had um, a phase-in approach of becoming a, a one-to-one -one district. And one-to-one -one meaning that every student will have uh, their own device. Now, we're not quite there yet, but what we did was we sped up that process considerably. And we're hoping that sometime this fall, after those devices come in, you probably read in the paper recently, that there's a, a shortage of devices and districts are waiting. We're one of those districts. But we, uh, we are working to make sure that our students have everything that they need. And these technology folk have really been working the distribution, working getting schools up, working making sure that our staff um, have some of the things they need. And sure, we still have challenges, we know. We've heard from uh, some of our families that some people still have some issues with connectivity. Please, I beg you for your patience. They are working their best to make sure that this uh, can happen for all of our families and whatever the need may be. You can go to our website at www.ktufsd.org forward slash tech support for help with common issues or contact the technology department. And folks, please be patient with that. I'll give you an example. The other day by nine o'clock in the morning, they had 300 email. And Kenton, we're a large suburban district, but we're not a ginormous district. We, we have so many technology people and they are doing their best. No excuses. They are gonna continue to do their best for you. I just wanna give you the reality of how hard that they are working. So we really do appreciate your patience with that. And thank you very much to all of our families and our schools that have been working so hard with our families. Food service. Um, now, we just had our second week of food distribution for the year. So let me give you some numbers. Last week, uh, we distributed on Wednesday and we distributed over 12,000 meals. We knew that we ran into some problems when it came to distribution, especially at the site, uh, the Hoover site. Uh, everybody saw those, those traffic jams on Sheridan, so we made some adjustments. And we, we really went for uh, additional pickup times. Folks, this week we increased our distribution by 63%. We distributed more than 20,500 meals this week alone. We did have some shortcomings again this week. And uh, some people came to our sites that were later in the day um, and we had to have them actually come back today to get meals because we did run out of some food. Um, our apologies for that, folks. It's, it's not intentional. We are respectful of, of your time and of everything that everybody's going through. Once again, we're doing everything that we can. We appreciate your patience with it. Um, we do apologize. And Kim Roll and her department, folks, you want to talk about people working around the clock? That's what these people are doing. Um, and I, I'm happy to announce that there's even more modifications. We will continue to learn and we will continue to adjust. So, for example, we are going to change how we're distributing to families. Beginning this upcoming week that we're gonna be coming into, distribution will be split into two days based on last name. And we're going to eliminate the lunchtime pickup. We're gonna have our pickup only later in the day. And this is why. What we're seeing is that there's, uh, our teachers are in the school, even though the students aren't in the school, our staff and our teachers, our administrators, they're all doing their work, well, for the most part, from the school sites. That is jamming up our parking lots, and then we have 20,000 meals to distribute, and it's jamming up our, our parking lots even more, causing a lot of frustration for our families. That, that's full disclosure. So what we're going to do is these two days, we're going to distribute on both of those days from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., 4 to 7. 
And we figured this would also help because some people may be uh, working. Uh, we have a three hour window and we have the two days, but this is what we're gonna ask for your help with. On Tuesdays from four to seven, we're gonna ask families with the last names of A through M. So if your last name begins with an A, all the way to if your last name begins with an M, we're gonna ask you to come on Tuesday from four to seven to any one of those sites. Those sites will still exist the way that they, were, that they existed in the past. Then we're gonna ask N through Z for four to seven on Thursdays. So we're eliminating Wednesday altogether and instead we're gonna have those two days, Tuesdays for families ending in A or beginning in A through M from four to 7 p.m. And then Thursdays for families last names starting uh, beginning with the letters N through Z, Thursdays from four to 7 p.m. for those folks. Now remember, masks are uh, required and social distance is required. Um, these details are being and will be continued to com uh, be communicated to all of our families. And of course, you can always log on to our website and you'll find this information as well. So thank you for your patience, folks. Thank you to our food service department. We know this isn't easy. And understand, it's one of those unpredictable measures that we try and predict and be prepared for. And, and sometimes we're right on and sometimes we fall a little short, but we'll continue to monitor and adjust. Thank you very much for your understanding, ladies and gentlemen. Our next announcement, our Board of Education meeting, next month for the month of October, um, I want you to be prepared for, we will continue to live stream our Board of Education meeting, but we are going to begin to uh, open up back to the public. Now, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, so more information will come out. Um, and we thank you for your patience with that, but we're also gonna have some, celebrate some of our schools and our staff um, at these, just like we've done previously in our board meetings. So please stay tuned for more information. But once again, that's a big announcement. Our October board meeting, it's not, we're not gonna be able to be wide open like we were before. We will have to have people wear masks. We will have to follow the social distancing guidance, but we are going to be able to open it to the public. Thank you to our Board of Education, who's really worked hard to find ways to make that happen. Uh, President Shamara and the entire crew are really doing great work for our community. So thank you community and thank you to our Board of Education. Our final two announcements, and they kind of go hand in hand, um, our big announcement on, ath on athletics. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that uh, a lot of you heard and have heard by now that yes, Kenton will be allowing athletics, but I have to give you all the caveats that come along with this, okay? Um, this was a very difficult decision, but after we looked at it, after NISFA and our section uh, made some changes, and after we looked at all of the data and uh, got a lot of feedback and looked at all of the positive, positives and negatives, uh, we decided to offer athletics for our fall sports. Now, just to go over what those are, boys and girls cross country, boys golf, girls gymnastics, varsity field hockey, boys and girls JV and varsity soccer. So we announced that we're moving forward per the governor's directives or, or, or guidance, I should say, NISFA and Section 6, but we're only going to be offering varsity and JV. Folks, in this fall season, we are not doing modified. And I know that's going to upset a lot of you, and I understand you being upset. But please understand that a lot of sports have also been pushed off to the spring, and I have not canceled modified yet for winter and spring. For right now, I'm saying that we, we're going to take this slow, okay? Um, please also understand, swimming was originally on the docket for fall, and that's been moved to March 1st. So what you're going to notice about this, and, and, and these are all the reasons that led to my decision for this. Careful consideration, looking at the data. Some of these sports, particularly soccer, were of greater concern to me and that's because of the contact. But at the end of the day, folks, some of the things that I took into consideration is that the majority of these sports are outdoor sports. The majority of these sports are individualized sports. And what I mean by that is that there may be teams, but 
Um, they're not uh, teams all together at one time. That was some of my hesitation with soccer, some of my hesitation with field hockey, uh, to be honest. But at the end of the day, you'll also see that these sports have very strict guidance. And I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be very strict with the guidance. It, there, there's, there's not going to be a, a lot of gray area here, ladies and gentlemen. So, for example, when it says masks are required in Kenton, masks are required. They have to be. And there, there's going to be other protocol that are going to be very specific that will be coming out. Um, and I want you to pay attention to the website. They should be up by this weekend. Um, but... Uh, uh, Please understand, as you see those guidance, like for example, I want the community to be prepared for this. It's not going to be wide open to the community for spectators. So I'm going to break that to you now, ladies and gentlemen. I know that's going to be a tough pill to swallow. Each um, participant will only receive two passes. Now that's something that uh, Niagara Frontier League that we're part of, um, all of our school districts in that league have agreed to these procedures. So some of these things are going to be Kenton specific, but some of them are not. Uh, the majority are not. They're going to be what we've all decided in order to at least be able to offer something on a limited basis this fall. But it really does lend itself to our model. Our model is Kenton. We are in a phase in approach, just like we're doing with athletics. And I also want to encourage you to understand this because this was the final decision maker for me. Athletics are fully voluntary. I am not, and I'm not going to allow any of our coaches. Our coaches don't feel that way. Um, we are not forcing anyone to participate in any of the athletics. Now, of course, we encourage athletics, and of course, we encourage um, the social, emotional well-being of all of our students. But we are going to absolutely encourage all of our families and students to participate based on your level of comfort. If you're not comfortable, it's okay that you wait a while. It's perfectly acceptable. So please understand comfort level is what uh, delayed me on this for so long. I looked at this just as intensely as we looked at opening school. The difference with athletics and the instructional model was that school was uh, a non-negotiable. If we were telling people that we were returning to school, they really didn't have much of an option to opt out, even though we were trying to figure out how to do that. Um, we are in a much better place when it comes to PPE. We are in a much better place when it comes to some experience now dealing with this pandemic and this model with phasing in and operating uh, buses and schools and, and the whole nine yards, no pun intended. Um, so you, you'll see that um, some of this you will be upset about, but I promise you, um, everything still falls into those two priorities that we set forward as a district. So that's me being fully transparent and, and hoping that you understand, giving you all the information that I have. Folks, when I tell you we looked at data, the thing that put me over the top with allowing us to do soccer was that we looked at the soccer that's been offered in Kenton, and I looked for any data that showed any type of positive cases, and it was not there. So um, once again, it's voluntary. Once again, they will be wearing masks. That's gonna be difficult. That's gonna be a challenge, but it's going to be a must. It's a must do, it's a non-negotiable. Um, so when we're doing these things, please understand um, it, it was not an easy decision and I want to be able to offer things to our students. I am grateful that swimming moved uh, to uh, later um, as of March 1st. Um, because then maybe we'll be in a different uh, place as a community. Um, so uh, a as we move forward, understand um, we're doing the best that we can, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, uh, our final announcement for today is that I, I promised for the past couple weeks, and I told you last week, I would tell you the date this week. So we are going to have a parent, another parent question and answer session um, and we're going to format it the same way that we did previously when the governor asked us to do these. This is just something that, as Kenton, uh, we want to keep this communication up. I really, once again, appreciate all of the parents for their different methods of communication. Please, I'm going to ask you folks, even when you don't agree with something, please remain uh, positive. Keep that positive energy. Positivity equals our productivity. 
Um, I'm a big believer in that. Um, we may not always have it 100% right. We don't claim to know everything. Um, but we will always stick to that we will outwork everyone else until we do get it as right as possible, okay? That's what this parent question and answer session is gonna be about. Um, we're gonna follow that format where we'll take 15 minutes and we'll focus a 15 minute presentation on athletics and instruction at both the elementary and secondary level. And then we'll have a 45 minute question and answer session. This session will happen next Thursday evening from five to 6 p.m. So once again, um, it will happen next Thursday evening from 5 to 6 p.m. We'll have another parent question and answer session. So this was a mouthful today. I, I know that uh, I hear people teasing me all the time. Wow, Samato, you got the gift to gab. Um, folks, I, I'm just trying to do the best that we can to communicate with you. Um, thank you for your positivity. When you see or talk to a teacher or an administrator, um, I, I know that they're thanking you for, for your patience, um, and, and, and I keep on hearing those great stories from our parents. Um, reach out to them and say thank you as well, um, because only together as a community, not just as, a, as an education system, not just as the parents at home, only together and us really lifting each other up will we accomplish the best that we can for our kids. There's nothing about this that's easy. I don't want us to get into this mode where we, because it started, that we think that we're in normal, regular time. No matter what, this stinks. Plain and simple. The best thing that we could have is 100% in-person instruction. Nothing beats it because our teachers are that good. They do the best for the kids at all times. So we're making do and trying to make it the best with the cards that were dealt. And if we could continue making it better, you better believe that we will. So I wanna thank you once again for your patience. Please always keep that at the core, okay? That we're always trying to get better. Um, and please always keep at your core that together, only together, we will be Kenton proud, Kenton strong, and together we will help each other to move Kenton forward. Thank you very much, stay safe, and please stay warm, enjoy your weekend.